Hello everyone, Human Hard Drive here for Visual Micro. Today we're going to be doing another Visual Micro tutorial. Uh, if you remember last time, uh, the tutorial was aimed for the novice Arduino user, someone who's n relatively new to programming and new to Arduino. So, showing them how to get started, having just found Visual Micro, the setup, and where everything is. Today's tutorial is more meant for the more mature Arduino user, uh, someone who's been programming maybe a little longer, uh, using the Arduino certainly longer, and has just found Visual Micro, and where more of the advanced features to uh, from the Arduino ID ha have been moved to in Visual Studio, uh, some of the advanced uh, some of the advanced things you can tweak in Visual Micro itself, and some of the things in Visual Studio slash Atmel Studio, which will mm, probably improve your workflow quite a bit. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, as you can see, I've got quite a big program here. It's quite a few lines. If I were to scroll all the way to the bottom, it, you can imagine it would take quite a while. And as you can see, I've just copied and pasted this out from my email, and it hasn't indented it very well at all. Now, the problem I had with the Arduino IDE was that the indentation system wasn't all that great and didn't really have the weight that Visual Studio has, and certainly a lot of other IDEs have. And the indentation system would actually break at certain times. It wouldn't fully indent or go back to where it previously indented. So I like indentation because it better shows what what loop you're working in, what if statement you might be working in, etc. So first thing I'm going to show you is how to get that nice proper indentation. So if you hit control A, select all of your code, then you're going to use a shortcut, a, a chord they call it, because it's two shortcuts technically. You're going to hit control K, which is one half the chord, then you're going to hit control F. And that gives you that nice indentation that works so well. Now, another quick thing about Visual Micro, or not Visual Micro, Visual Studio, kind of working with the workflow thing is a bit first, because you know it rolls off better, uh, is I'm now stuck at the bottom of this very long code, this very long program, this 2115 line program. I want to get back to the top. And I don't want to drag the scroll bar all the way up. So, quick way to do that is with this thing here. It's navigate backward. And apparently I didn't click all the way at the top of the page first. But, eh, ignoring my flaw aside, um, what that does is it returns to the previous point you put your cursor. So if I were to scroll all the way back up to the top, put my cursor at the top this time, scroll back down, maybe type some stuff, tweak it, whatever. Oh no, I'm down here now. I want to get back to the top or I want to get back to where I where I previously was. And now it's being quite stiff. Why isn't let's try this one more time. Okay. Put my cursor here. See? Here's my cursor. Here's my There we go. So now I can scroll all the way back down to the bottom of the page, go here, and then navigate backwards to get right to the top. There it is. So apparently it didn't like how I clicked. I wasn't quite firm enough with my clicking. And you can navigate all the way back, all the way forward. So this is good if you want to jump back from one edit to another, to another, to another, very quickly, very easily, from function to function. It definitely makes working a lot easier, because it, it much more easily follows your thought pattern. It's like, okay, want to tweak this, and I just want to jump back here and make the other tweak. Everything's great. It all works. Yay. So that is those are the two biggest workflow things I'll probably mention during this video probably the things I use most often, so like that. So let's jump into some Visual Micro stuff uh, from the Arduino IDE. Uh, if you've done a lot of stuff with the Arduino, you probably have bought a couple ATmega328P chips and you want to burn the bootloader onto them. That's been moved here, as well as the ability to upload using a programmer. That's the same programmer list as with the Arduino, and you can I believe add other programmers to this list. I think I've seen a few people do that, and it's as long as you uh, add the programmers to the Arduino IDE you have downloaded already, it will automatically be added to uh, the Atmel Studio Visual Micro plugin, and everything works nice and easy. Now I'm not sure, but I'm fairly certain. At least it's been for me. It feels like the burning of the bootloader is slightly faster. Could just be biased. Could be that I like Visual Micro a little more than the Arduino IDE but it feels a little faster. 
So the, those are where those two more advanced things are. Your novice user is obviously not going to burn their own bootloaders very often, if at all, but something you're probably going to use quite a bit if you buy chips instead of boards. So that. Moving on. Now let's come to this. Uh, if you watch the novice tutorial, you probably saw this, which is where you can see all of the example code. Uh, this was didn't show you tools and platform explorer. But what it also has is reference to every um, built-in Arduino command. All you've got to do is double click and it opens up a web page which is actually in the Arduino IDE folder wherever you put it. So it's nice and easy. This was something that was built into the Arduino IDE. It wasn't very well known. You could highlight a command or a um, an identifier, right click and say open web page if it was found within the source file uh, within that list of files and it certainly beats having to go all the way back uh, or open up a browser and try and go to the Arduino ID it's already in your er, yeah go to your browser go to the Arduino website it's nice to have it built into visual micro making a lot of hand gestures that you're not seeing but yep yeah, so again it's very quick you can just select and have it open up so all you've got to do, and again you can type in for the command you're looking for, because it will auto jump to an alphabetical, it's, alphab it's alphabetized, so I can start typing and it will find the command it thinks I want, which is very nice. Other thing that's built in is this sort of Google, this sort of Google web search, so I can look for something relating to SPI, and I can just type that in, and it will show me SPI things related to the Arduino and solely related to the Arduino because they're all very they're very well sorted. It's tagged in a way that only shows you things related to the Arduino. You can look at Arduino reference for SPI and you can also look at Arduino tutorials and how it's sorted. So it's it's very well thought out that everything you'd possibly want to do with the Arduino research wise, reference wise is all built in and that's really great. It just speeds up your workflow immensely. So that's that. So if I close that, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's indented. It didn't unindent on me. All right. So let's talk about an issue. I'm not sure many people have with the Arduino IDE. It's something I had to tweak with, and that's the concept of multiple Arduino files within one folder. Uh, the biggest issue you'd have is every time you create a new .ino file it wants to put it in its own proper folder. It's nice. It's meant to keep it nice and organized. Problem with that is if you want to have multiple .ino files within one folder it's going to start complaining when you try and open the .ino file that isn't matched to the folder name. But with Visual Micro what you can do is if you open up the Solution Explorer I've got it docked here on the side. Uh, depending on your toolbar configuration you can find it right here it's in one of these drop-down menus, but I honestly do not remember which one. And I'm probably going to thumb over it and miss it, and someone's going to tell me I missed it. But, yeah, it's probably already docked to the side. If you are just load, if you haven't tweaked with your uh, Atmel Studio or Visual Studio window at all, it's probably docked to the side. Anywho, if you click on the solution... You can click Add, and you can add a new Arduino item. We'll just call this Test. Why not? And what that does is it creates a new INO file. Now, the great thing about this is, if you've ever tried to create a blank INO file, you know you have to put in the void setup and the void loop methods in order for it to compile without giving you an error. You don't have to do that with this. So what I can do is type in void test function int test. I can create essentially an Arduino INO library file that I can reference from my main file, from my LED clock file. So yeah, I can build my own little library file and just fill it with, say, all of the methods, all of the variables, all of the defines. I can have a separate program. I can reference, or not I can have a separate program. I can have a whole bunch of separate methods related to different processes, which, I, again, I can just reference from my main file. It's all very nice and easy. And it's nice because you don't have to write something in, say, C or C++ that you may not be used to. 
and you can just very quickly create a new file, fill it with all the things you'd need, and keep your main file nice and clean. So uh, I'm not gonna. So yeah, so it puts it right there, which is great. Now the next thing you can do. Speaking of library files, I'm just gonna delete that very quickly. Speaking of library files, is the great thing about uh, Visual Studio is that if I say include a file, like I've included one here, I can, it opens it, or it shows you the path right here, and I can just hit go, and it takes me immediately to the source file. So I can take a look at the .h file, I can look at all the defines, all the methods, all the variables very quickly, and it beats having to open up, your, go find where you have the program folder, look through the library files, find this one, and open it and say notepad++. You can, because it's a .h file and it's recognized by visual slash atmel studio, you can open it right here. Very nice and quick. Downside, you can't see the .c file. You're probably going to have to mess around with mess around with finding that. But, for just trying to find for just trying to find the .h file with all the defines and all the methods and such, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good. Good. Uh, in the Solution Explorer, you can also find uh, .h files which are created by Visual Micro. Like this one is the this is the main .h file, and this has a whole bunch of setup for uh, Visual Micro. But the cool thing is that it will actually direct you immediately to the Arduino .h file. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's sort of what allows the Atmel Studio to commu to work. So it has all of the library file. It ooh, let's try that again. It's what allows Atmel Studio to work w well with the Arduino. It, it's, it's what allows the Arduino to tie to C, if you will. So it's got, if I open this file, it's got like all the C defines, all of the, so all of your variables, what you define as high, low, input, output, input, pull up, true, false, all these things are defined here. And again, this is what communicates with the C and the high-level Arduino language. So that can be found very quickly through the Solution Explorer for this file. And again, it will show you all the files you have tied to this solution, like the test.ino, the ledclock.ino. Um, you can find the pins.arduino file. Again, it's very easy to just go through your entire library stack bit by bit. And you can move as far back as you'd like to look through every bit of code. And it's really great if you're one of those people who likes to look back and see how the programmer has done something, how you can tweak something, and it again, it all works very well. It all flows. It makes a better workflow. So, just close all these out. So that's how you open up um, library files very quickly. And again, because this is Visual Studio slash Atmel Studio, you can open not only the dot h file you can go back and find the dot c file or the dot cpp file and open it in this without issue so another plus so let's look into the higher level uh, adjustments you can do within visual micro if you go oops, should probably have said where that was tools options you got all the options for the visual studio slash atmos studio we're going to ignore those and we're just going to pop into visual Stu visual micro general and this has a whole bunch of higher level things that you can mess with. So you can do stuff with the serial monitor, uh, auto clear, auto reconnect, which is a nice thing to have. It will automatically try and reconnect to a disconnected system, or a disconnected Arduino rather. Uh, auto scroll, DTR, buffer size. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with the compiler. You can open up the build folder after it's done. So you can see, I believe that's where the .hex file is stored, if you want to get access to that. Stop on error, which is a great thing to have to be able to turn on and off. You can even turn on verbose, which will show you everything the compiler is doing. You can tweak the compiler optimization, which not something a lot of people are probably going to want to modify, but if you felt so inclined to see what it does, you can tweak it here very easily. Parent libs is a nice feature to be able to turn on and off if you have library files that are kept within the same folder as the .ino file. You can be able to include those or search for them automatically, which is what this parameter does. Some stuff with the debugger, which there will be a tutorial for. 
and a whole bunch of other stuff, which is, again, if you want to tweak what you're working with, it's all here and it's all very well laid out. Again, it's all done in a way to make your Arduino workflow very nice, very smooth, very easy. So that's pretty much it for the visual micro side of things. Uh, I'll go into some of my nice favorite uh, things you can do within Atmel Studio slash Visual Studio. Uh, I already talked about the indent, which is nice, and the ability to move back to where your previous cursor was. If you are one of those people who likes to comment, there is a spell check feature. I'm sure that makes a lot of people very happy. Not, not a big thing for me. Uh, you have the ability to select massive quantities of things and indent or de-indent appropriately. You can shrink things away, blow things back up. Very nice and easy. But yeah, it's the sort of thing where if you look around, it's probably look around for a feature, you're probably gonna find it. Oops, that's my antivirus popping up. So if you just look around for something, it's probably already been done. Visual Studio and Atmel Studio are very well done pieces of software that have been written for programmers by programmers. They know what you want. They know what you look for. It's all here for you. Again, that's why it's so much better than the Arduino IDE. Everything you want is just a keyboard shortcut away. It's just an option you can tick on and off. Is something you can tweak. It's all right there. So yeah, that's it for the basic Visual Micro stuff. This is all things you can do with the free copy of Visual Micro. Going to be doing, uh, I think, two more tutorials for uh, the debugger, which is a, a paid add-on for Visual Micro, which we'll get to. Uh, it's, well, we'll talk about that later. But until then, uh, I'm Human Hard Drive, again, here for Visual Micro. Thanks for watching.